year I made a video call What's the best Metroid to start with? And there I said the following words I've never actually played Metroid Other M Maybe one day I'll make a full review on it because it's the only drive I'll ever have to play this game And you know, I think it's finally time I've been ignoring this title ever since I became a Metroid fan but something along the way motivated me to finally give it a shot. I just really like Metroid. Other M. What can I say about it in general terms? It's been regarded as the worst mainline entry in the entire franchise. Longtime fans hate the shit out of it. And it's been pointed out as the reason as to why the franchise remained dormant for so many years. And well, if a game has such an infamous reputation, it has to be for a reason. But the question is, how much of that is true? There are times when hatred gets blown out of proportion, and you don't really get to know exactly why. Look at Federation Force. It has a similar reputation to Other M, but not for its quality, but rather due to the circumstances that surrounded it back in 2015. I've talked with people who played it, and most agreed that it was pretty good. I'm not saying you should suddenly like the game, or it eliminates the bad things about it. But I think it's always better to have a hands-on experience, or at the very least, listen to a credible source. So with more than 10 years after its release, I bet you're wondering, where were the haters right about bashing the game? Whew. Well, for starters, everyone was 100% right about the story. I want all of you to be aware, from this point onwards it'll be full spoiler territory. You can leave right now if you want to experience the story for yourself. But before you leave, why would you want to do that? Other M's story is embarrassing. Metroid has never been known for complex storytelling. When it comes to that, the games are simple and straight to the point, with its most ambitious narratives being the lore entries from the Prime series. Other M wanted to be more ambitious, emotional and cinematic. And you know, given the sci-fi theme of the series, I don't think that's a bad idea. I see nothing wrong with wanting to make your characters more humane and the world feel more alive. But Other M didn't achieve any of that. It had the opposite effect. It's like everything it tried to do just backfired right on its face. The main offender is Samus Aran. If you want to see a magnificent fall from glory, look no further than Other M's story. Like, Fuck! Okay, okay, one step at a time. What is it that makes Samus such a beloved character? She's strong, she's badass, she gets shit done, and looks awesome while doing it. Other M turns Samus into a weak and overly emotional character that can't think for herself. Normally I would understand part of that behavior to a certain degree, but the game doesn't do a good job to justify it. Right off the bat, we're let known two things. She's suffering from depression thanks to the events of Super Metroid. Okay, I guess she was more attached to the baby Metroid than we thought. And then we are told of her relationship with her former commander, also fatherly figure Adam Malkovich. Something you should already be aware of if you played Fusion. These are the main concepts that are supposed to tell us, the player, why Samus is the way she is in this game. But these drivers are executed so poorly, and combined, they affect her in a negative way. The events of Super Metroid left Samus vulnerable and dependent on others. That much is valid. Unfortunately, the person she comes to rely on during that time is Adam Malkovich, and... This guy fucking sucks! I have a lot of problems with him. First is the fact that his relationship with Samus doesn't feel believable at all. She spends a lot of time telling how he's the most important person in the world for her, and how he turned her into the woman she is today. 
But that's it! They tell you that, yet they never show it. There's this one flashback that tries to do that. It's about how Adam made a harsh decision in order to protect Samus. And that could have worked, but it's impossible to digest because Adam spends the entire game putting you in danger and making stupid decisions. I'm sure you've heard about this before. In other M's, Samus has all her upgrades from the get-go. But then comes this guy who prohibits all of them because it will put the lives of the squad in danger. Alright, that's reasonable. But why the fuck are you locking in offensive features like the barrier suit, the gravity suit, the space jump or the grapple beam? They help with Samus' survivability and exploration. And his logic behind authorizing your upgrades is stupid. Because he decides to split his entire squad right after a battle with a monster that was won thanks to Samus' intervention. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be fine on their own, jackass. Here's the most infamous part in the entire game. Sector 3 is an area full of lava and lethal high temperatures. It takes three save rooms, a chase sequence, and a near-death Samus for Adam to say. Samus, activate the barrier feature on your suit to protect yourself from heat damage. What a load of shit! And it doesn't stop there. There's a cutscene where he shoots Samus in the back with a freeze gun right in front of a baby Metroid. He kills the creature, but then wonders how his gun was able to work since the Metroids of Sector Zero are immune to ice and merely theorizes that maybe the baby Metroids still don't develop an immunity to their main weakness. That means he renders Samus defenseless while he still didn't know if he could protect her. What a... Ugh. Do you remember how in Metroid Fusion they always talked about Adam being a military genius and one of the few people that genuinely care for Samus? Other M's dump on everything that game built up, by making him stupid, negligent, and borderline abusive. And it's that same reason that makes Samus a worse character, because she blindly, unquestionably follows this idiot's commands without a single regard for her own safety, outright contradicting the image we had of her up to this point. Samus was a strong character that always acted on what she believed was best. From single-handedly saving the Luminoth race, to outright destroying the SR388 planet. In Other M, there's rarely an instance in which Samus acts on her own. And so many problems could have been avoided if she had only... been the character she's supposed to be. I can only recall the moment when she activates her space jump, but that's only because contact was lost with Adam. You know what I also hate? Her inner monologues. I like it when characters react to their surroundings, but Samus doesn't really do that often. Instead, she just points out the obvious, something that the Prime series didn't need to do to have great moments. And on the few instances where she expresses what she feels, it's really cringe. That's the best word I can use. She's overly melodramatic, and the dialogue tries way too hard to be deep. I'm sorry, but... The word he so obviously chose, outsider, pierced my heart. I saw in an interview that the developer set out to make Samus more humane, emotional, and feminine. But what does that really mean? Did they think those traits meant weak, dependent, and boring? No, that's stupid! I've seen tons of female characters in the past that are insecure, are full of emotions, and have strong motherly instincts. And they're awesome! Seth traits are not mutually exclusive to Samus, but Other End didn't know how to apply them without ruining her entire character. You want some evidence of that? Check out the mangas! Samus and Joy, Metroid EX, Magazine C Manga. They do a better job at storytelling, building up the world, and making Samus a better character. I know I've just been bitching about her and Adam this entire time, 
but it's seriously that detrimental to the experience. And it's also unfortunately the juiciest point of discussion of this game. Because everything else is... There. The other characters are a bunch of nobodies. If I can give them some credit, it's that they survived longer than I expected. Two hours until they all start to die. And for GF soldiers, that is an achievement. There's a plot point related to one of them being an imposter among us. But it's quickly dropped and it was left with no satisfying payoff. The main plot is okay, just more proof that the Galactic Federation are a bunch of morons. But what bothers me is how terrible the grinding is. The main theme of Other M is motherhood. But instead of using clever analogies, the game decides to drop words related to that theme at every possible chance. You may have heard Metroid fans constantly joke about the baby, but it's seriously that bad. The baby, the baby, and the baby, the baby, the baby, the baby, the baby. babies cry, the baby crying, babies cry. The baby was the last of its kind. Not even the title tries to hide it. <laughs> Mother? Mom. Other M story is what I can describe as pretentious. It tries way too hard. Either to bring an emotion out of you, or to give more complexity to its characters. And it fails miserably. If I can rescue at least one thing from this mess of a plot, it's Anthony Hicks. Remember me? This guy is awesome. Super charismatic and very entertaining. He doesn't appear very often, but when he does, he steals the show. My favorite part is when Ridley is beating the ever-living shit out of Samus and he just goes. Hey! Hey, boss! Don't you know how to treat a lady? And then proceeds to dodge an attack with a backflip. What a guy! You don't see side characters shit talk Ridley and cheat death at the same time. But Anthony did it! I think I left it very clear that Other M has a terrible story and it ruined the reputation of one of gaming's most iconic characters. But fine, let's forget that exists. I suppose the gameplay is good enough to give it a shot. Well, I am. Um, yo creo que. Uh, ay, burra, no sé. Well, for starters, the control is not very good. Other M can only be played with a single Wii mode. Moving with the D pad in through the environments is super awkward. And over time, it can wear on your thumb. It's not the worst thing in the world. You can get used to it, make no mistake. But then, we have another problem directly tied to it. By holding the Wii mode vertically, you can change into a first-person perspective, which is mandatory to solve puzzles, aim at weak spots, and it's the only way in which you can use missiles. This is the part that leaves me super mixed, because when it works, it's honestly pretty fun. I like having to change perspectives in battle to shoot things I wasn't able to hit before. And some of the puzzles are satisfying to clear. But just the fact that you constantly have to awkwardly turn your Wii mode to achieve that is underwhelming. Well, in first person, you cannot move at all, making you an easy target to enemies. While pointing to the screen, your lock-on works automatically. And while there's many things in front of you, it's very likely it'll aim incorrectly. And in the heat of battle it's more apparent. Missiles are an efficient way to take out tough enemies. But those are the ones that love to move a lot. When you're focusing on dodging, but also want to shoot them, you won't be able to tell where your aim will land. What bothers me the most is that this mechanic will be better if it wasn't for the control scheme. I've mentioned games in the past, like Zelda Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, and Skyward Sword. Yes, they're gimmicky, 
but the mechanics built around them justified their different controls. Other M is not clever by making you use only the Wii mode. It's intrusive and counterintuitive. If it was up to me, I would have made the game compatible with the nunchuck. Shoot with A, jump with B, use the morph ball with the C button, and go into first person mode by holding down the C button while still being able to move with the joystick. I believe that would have been far more comfy and easier to get adapted to. And it could have been a major boom, because if there's one thing I genuinely love about Other M, is how Samus feels. She's so smooth, her transition into the morph ball is seamless, she runs at a pleasant speed, and has the right amount of weight on her jumps. And since the camera angles are mostly good, I rarely had issues with being hit by stuff I couldn't see, or misplacing my jumps due to bad depth perception. And if I can give the game some extra credit, is that it knew how to translate well the upgrades in a third person environment. And I didn't feel like any of them lost relevance as I progressed, so that's neat. The combat itself is basic, it's fun, but it's very easy to break. New to the series, we got the sense move. By pressing on the d-pad just before getting hit, Samus can perform this dodge that makes her near invincible and can give her an instant charge shot. Combine that with the new diffusion beam that explodes on contact and small enemies can oppose no threat against you. This maneuver requires no effort to abuse and it can effectively remove most of the challenge the game has to offer. Like no joke, when I was surrounded by too many enemies just trying to move Samus would cause her to sense move. Even when I wasn't trying, the game was playing itself. I don't think the combat is terrible by any means, it's just very unbalanced, it can get a bit repetitive, and when you realize certain things, it loses purpose. In other M, enemies don't drop ammo or health. There's also a new focus mechanic that can restore your missiles and your health if it's critically low. And since save rooms are abundant, way too abundant, may I say, you don't have much reason to actually fight enemies unless it's mandatory. The combat shines more with the boss battles. They are easily the best part about the game, and next to Anthony, of course. Most of them are still pretty easy, but I didn't feel myself being on autopilot while I was fighting. One boss actually kicked my ass once, so... That's something, I guess? The exploration is a joke. If you thought fusion was linear, you clearly haven't played Other M. You're always told where to go, there's rarely any chance to deviate yourself from that path, and as I said earlier, save rooms are everywhere. You know what the biggest irony is? Despite being extremely linear, and being very easy, Other M somehow manages to have the worst pacing in the entire series. Prime 1 and 2 had it bad with the Choso artifacts and the temple keys, but at least those happen at the end of the games. Mom feels like it moves like a snail. Cutscenes are plentiful, they drag for too long, and you cannot skip them on your first playthrough. The overabundance of save rooms is one thing, but you are always obligated to save in order to open the next door. There are times when Samus goes into an over-the-shoulder perspective, but every time she does that, she starts walking extremely slow and it takes forever. There's this one part where I almost fell asleep because it was so boring. You find a research facility, start walking slow, save the game. Continue to walk slow, you watch a cutscene, then you save the game once again and continue to walk slow. You watch another cutscene, you save again, continue to walk slow, and finally when there is some action, it's just... I fucking hate these mandatory sequences when you go in first person and have to search for something. Because you are rarely told what to look for. These are not immersive. I feel no reward from moving the Wiimote until I find something cryptic that allows me to move on. The hand-holding structure, 
combined with the terrible pacing, didn't give me a single incentive to want to replay the game and score a higher item percentage. 40% is very low, but I just said, that's it, that is enough, I don't need nor want to spend more time with this. Alright, let me be a bit more positive. Visually, Other M is good for Wii standards. The characters look nice, I can only complain that I can't tell apart from the nobodies of the GF squad. Like seriously, I thought this guy was Adam at some point. The environments are varied and the colors stand out well. The action is honestly really cool and that's where Samus looks best. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing her ripping a creature's head off and shooting it. Or that scene I already mentioned where Anthony dodges Ridley's attack with a backflip. The voice acting is so poor. I don't think it's the actors' fault. They were more than capable of the job, but they were given terrible direction. Samus is the best example of this. Her voice is fine and can pull off a good performance at times. But it's like the directors told her to read the script while sounding as bored as possible. Kinda like this. But without a doubt, the area where the presentation falls the worst is in the music. There's barely any! I know for a fact I heard stuff at some point, but it was so generic and unremarkable there wasn't anything that stuck with me. The best song in the entire game is actually Ridley's theme, but we've heard that one before on better games. You know, every time I make a video, I make sure to give it music from the game I'm talking about. Other M is the first time I pick songs from other games because this one gave me nothing to work with. You could argue that no music helps to bring out a feeling of isolation, but I call that bullshit. Especially when every other game in the series achieved that with great songs that can be listened any day, any time. So, what else can I add? I think I said everything I wanted to say. It's been more than 10 years, and now I fully understand why Other M is seen as the black ship of the Metroid series. It's not the worst thing I've ever played, in fact, there's stuff about it I quite enjoy. I wouldn't mind another attempt at a 3D third-person Metroid game. Just give it a comfy control scheme, make it more open, rebalance the combat, give it a better pacing, and don't soil Samus' reputation again. Because we know it took a few long years until she will look cool again. Overall, while my time with this was... Eh, I don't think it was all a waste because it let me see some positive things. Unfortunately, they're not enough to clean the game's name. And I think fans were justified about being hostile towards it. I cannot blame them at all. If a game is okay at best, and unbearable at worst, and then your franchise remains dormant for years, it's easy to point to it like the clown that got the entire class in trouble. It's very hard to recommend this. I mean, long-time Metroid fans? No, they already hate the game. Ubis? There are other games that do a far better job in introducing you to the series and are superior overall. Action lovers? Again, there are other titles that are more challenging and have more rewarding combat systems. This is something you only play if you're very extremely curious. It's the very definition of myth, because the best thing you'll get out of it is Anthony!